Hey everyone, my goal for this video is to help you understand the similarities and differences between the where and having clauses in the select queries you write in SQL. So let's get into an overview and then stick around until the end to see some examples that will give you a visual understanding of these really important concepts. So in both the where and having clauses, you are applying a filter on your query results. But the where clause can be used in any query while the having clause must follow a group by statement. So the where clause filters results before a group by if there is one, while the having clause filters results after a group by. So you cannot have a having clause without a group by first. Another way of saying this is that the where clause filters individual rows, while the having clause filters aggregations. The where clause, however, cannot be used on aggregate functions, while the having clause can. And in the where clause, you can filter on any column in a given table, regardless of whether or not you include that column in the select statement. In the having clause, you can obviously filter on any column in the select statement, but if you're gonna filter on any additional columns that are not in the select statement, that must be an aggregate function. And we'll take a look at a couple examples to demonstrate that in a second. And in neither clause can you use column aliases. So in both cases, that will generate an error. And one last point here is that you can use where and having clauses in the same query. So feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot of this slide. And in the meantime, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And now let's get into some examples. So here's our sample data set for our examples. And you can pause the video to read this little description and look at some of these rows I have printed out down below. And now let's get into an example of the where clause. So let's show all students parent education level test prep and math score who scored at least 90 in math. So we want to select parent education, test prep, and math score from our table name, which is exams. And if we stop right there in our query and run this, we're gonna get all 1000 rows in the table for just these three columns that we selected. And this is where the where clause comes in. So we only wanna show rows with at least 90 in math and filtering on the rows means a where clause. So where math score is greater than or equal to 90. So when we run this, we're gonna go from a thousand rows down to only 65. And another quick note here is we don't actually need math score in the select statement in order for this query to run. So the only difference between what we have down here and what we have now is that we just don't have this uh, math score column on the end, but all the rows are gonna be the same. So we have the same 65 there, but we don't actually need uh, the column in the select statement to, to filter on it in a where clause. All right, so let's look at an example of the having clause. So first, let's show the number of students in each ethnic group in the data set. Then we'll run our filter after that. So number of students, right away you think the count, and then each ethnic group. So we're gonna be grouping by the ethnicity column. So let's select ethnicity, and then our aggregate function, which is the count. So we can say count star, give that an alias of just CNT for short. This is from our exams table. And then to make sure we have data from each of those groups, we are grouping by ethnicity. Run that query. And these are the numbers for each of our five ethnic groups. So you can think of this almost as like your new table. So you have this output here, and now you're gonna run a filter on what we have here. And this is an aggregation. So running a filter on an aggregation means a having clause. So this is after the group by, I'll add in having. And now we wanna filter out groups that do not have at least 150 students. So having count star greater than or equal to 150. And we are gonna go from five rows in this output down to just these three that meet that criteria. And we have this alias here, the column alias CNT but if we uh, try to replace count star with the alias, this is going to return an error. So you cannot use column aliases in the having clause or the where clause. So you're gonna have to actually put in count star there. And now we get our correct output. 
All right, let's take a look at a second example. So first we'll show the average reading score in each category of parent education level, and then we'll try out a couple of filters with the having clause. So very similar structure of the query. So we want each group of parent education. So select parent education. This time our aggregate function is going to be an average. So we want the average AVJ of reading score. Give this an alias of average reading score. Oops, from, from statement first, so from exams. And then we want to group by parent education. And a nice uh, shortcut here is because parent education is the first or index one col uh, column in the select statement here, you can just say group by one. And that's the same thing as saying group by parent education. Let's run that query. Again, I think this is a really good visual visual way to understand what we're doing with having clauses is show your output first after the group by and then apply your having clause. So here's our output and let's filter out, uh, let's see, only select parent education groups with an average reading score between 64 and 71. So having, we need our average reading score between 64 and 71. So we go from all six parent education groups down to just four that meet this criteria. All right, let's try out a, another having clause. So only select groups with at least 200 students. And number of students right away, again, you think the count. And we do not need to have count in our select, clause, uh, select statement here because it is an aggregate function. So we can say having count star greater than or equal to 200. So you can filter on a aggregate function here, even though it's not in the select statements, you can't just filter on any random column. So it either has to be in the select statement or it's another aggregate function. So we can run this and we're gonna go from those six parent education groups down to three that have at least 200 students in them. And just to verify this, then we can actually go back and add in another column here for count star. And let's make sure these groups all have at least 200. Okay, now let's look at an example of where and having clauses in the same query. So first, we're going to show the average reading score by female students only in each category of parent education level. So this is going to be a very similar query to the one we just wrote up here. So we can just copy that, paste it down here, and this is going to be our base. And just for now, I'm going to comment out this part of the query because we only want to show female students. And this is happening before aggregation. So this is going to be a where clause. So where the gender equals female. And I commented this out here so that we can run just this part of the query to see what we're filtering out before we get to the group by. Because if we run this, these, uh, this aggregate function without a group by, we'll get an error. So let's run this. And so we started with 1,000 rows, and we're down to only the 483 women in the data set now we're going to go ahead and do our group by here. So let's pull this back into the query, run our group by on parent education, and we have our six groups. All right, so now let's apply a filter. So having only show data for groups with at least one student with a perfect score in all subjects. So we have the average score column, and a perfect score would mean an average score of 100. And at least one student means that the maximum uh, average score is going to be equal to 100. So having max is our aggregate function. Average score equal to 100. And again, this does not need to be in the select statement because it is an aggregate function. So we can run this query. And we're down to just these three parent education levels that meet the criteria. All right, now number three here, let's try out another having clause. So we'll delete that and only show data for these three groups. So these three uh, parent education levels, we'll go ahead and copy that to make this a little bit faster. So having parent education in, and then these three. And we have this little uh, problem here with the apostrophe within the string. 
And to make sure that SQL reads this as one entire string, you need to double the apostrophe within the string. So a little uh, trick there to avoid an error. And we can run this and we should just have those three parent education levels, which we do right there. And an interesting point here, because we're filtering on a column that is in our group by in our having clause here, you could actually move this part to the where clause and you're going to get the same exact output. And you kind of think about why that makes sense. So if we just add a second uh, criterion here, say and parent education is in those three, and we run this, our output is going to be the exact same. All right, and let's move on to one last question here. So show the total writing points scored and number of students for students who scored at least 80 in math in each unique combination of gender, lunch, and test prep. And then only show groups with average writing scores of at least 85. So if you want, you can pause the video now and try to work out this query on your own. And I'm gonna get going on the solution now. So right away, uh, we can see we want total writing points. That's gonna be the sum of writing score and the number of students, so the count. Uh, and we only want students who scored at least 80 in math. So that's gonna be our where clause. And then for each unique combination of these three columns, that means we're gonna be grouping by gender, lunch, and test prep. And then this last part is gonna be a filter after aggregation. So this is gonna be in our having clause. So let's build out our query. So let's select, we need the sum of writing score. We'll call this total writing points. And then we need the count. So count star, these are gonna be our two ag functions. So count shorthand, let's say alias uh, number of students. And we need these three columns because they are gonna be in our group by. Let's add those to the front here. Okay, now our from statement from exams as usual. Now we need our group by. So we want to group by all three of these here. And we can use our shorthand here. So this is column one, two, and three in the select statement. So group by one, two, three. And you can always run these queries along the way to make sure your output looks good. And now we need to add in that where clause as well. So we want only to include students who scored at least 80 in math. So this is where math score is greater than or equal to 80. So the where clause as always is gonna go before the group by. And now all we have left is the having clause here at the end. So having average writing score of at least 85. So average writing score greater than or equal to 85. We can run that query and this is going to be our final result. So again, take a look at that code and try to work it out on your own. And that is the end of the video for today. So please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel for a lot more of this type of content going forward. And as always, thanks for watching.